for lunch and forced into the cold, rainy weather outside, Octavia and James are literally forced to walk the streets. They are noticed by the white owner of a, owners of a grocery store who invite them in for a meal. However, Octavia's pride will not allow her to accept the old couple's kindness. Recognizing Octavia's pride and James's hunger, the old lady concocts a meaningless task for him to perform in exchange for the meal to ameliorate the mother's pride. James realizes that the task is not real, yet he carries it out because he recognizes the intentions behind the act. James refuses to betray the old couple's roots in the end, suggests the, pot the potential that he will be able to successfully negotiate extreme and harsh forces present in his environment and become an emotionally balanced human being, despite the threatening conditions surrounding him. Gaines is quoted in an interview as having said that I never think of myself, number one, a black writer, quote black or Louisiana black, but as a writer who happens to draw from his environment what his life is, what heritage is. Regardless of how he sees himself, Gaines' writing is thoroughly shaped by his heritage as a Southern African American who spent his early life in Louisiana. That heritage bequeathed to him a decided concern with imbuing place with meaning, significance, and even life as it has become a defining element in his creative endeavors. It is also determined that he would give us a body of fiction that would provide a glimpse into the often submerged culture of the South and a neglected element of its population. Thank you. Questions or Who are critical of them? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that part alone. I don't know that part, but um, probably the, the most uh, often cited example of the neo-slave narrative nowadays is Toni Morrison's *Beloved*. Uh, many people talk about that uh, book, um, in that her uh, approach to the, the neo-slave narrative is, is fairly typical. That it is looked at from a post-emancipation uh, perspective. Of course, with Gaines, he, he starts with the 1960s, and he looks all the way back, uh, supposedly 110 years uh, with that. Um, at the, the, the pioneer of this is probably um, Margaret Walker in her massive book, Jubilee, that many, many of you may have read, uh, which um, begins to look back, and it's really a family kind of thing. And of course, the most widely known example in the neo-slave narrative is Roots. Um, uh, uh, Alex Haley's uh, um, you know, uh, magnus opus uh, that became such an impo important and popular uh, television drama. Um, but one of the things that I find particularly interesting about most of the neo-slave narrative is the fact that they do focus on the experiences of uh, black females, which was an experience that almost totally got left out of uh, the original slave narrative tradition. Uh, besides uh, Linda Brent's incident in the life of a slave girl, uh, Harriet Jacobs, uh, there are very few examples of, um, of slave narratives written by women. It's fairly obvious as to why that probably would have been true. Uh, certainly fewer women escaped from slavery uh, than men, and they had far more to protect by not telling their stories, uh, those who did, than most men did, um, even though the men were often quite protective of a lot. Uh, but in retrospect, and, uh, 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 certainly that story can now be told, and there's clearly enough information there. Toni Morrison rips uh, Beloved out of the headlines of Cincinnati newspapers um, based on a, a real story. I mean, although she certainly uh, does a lot more than the, the headlines did, but the, the story was there, and it had to be told, and she told it. 
uh, Shirley Ann Williams' um, uh, Dessa Rose uh, is a similar kind of story. One of the things that a lot of Southern black writers are really concerned about is the problem of landlessness for, for, for African Americans. Because one of the things that they came out of slavery without was land, and this is something that African Americans were never able to really sort of, sort of capture. Uh, one of the things that uh, you know, Gaines is really concerned about in, in the sort of Louisiana plantation uh, kind of tradition is the way in which uh, the land gets exploited um, through mechanization and the displacement of African Americans off of the land as a result. And I, I, like the gathering of old men, I think is a, a typical uh, example of that. Where people only have memories. They, they don't have any connect, real connection to uh, the land anymore. I mean, you take a writer like Alice Walker. Alice Walker is concerned about another issue that's created by black landlessness, and that is mobility uh, and instability. For example, in Third Life of, of Grange Copeland, uh, one of the problem is that the family are sharecroppers, and as sharecroppers, you don't own the land; you only work the land. And people are always trying to to escape to, to find a better sharecropping condition. And so the attachment to the land is is um, sort of different in 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 these two writers. Um, but they're all. I mean, if you also know Alice Walker, for example. Um, um, the Color Purple, uh, and, and works like that. Uh, one of the things that you, you notice, uh, get sort of a sense in a lot of black writing is that the outdoors is extremely important uh, as a site for community. The front porch, uh, for, for Gaines, he calls it the gallery. Uh, in most other places, we just have plain old front porches, but in Louisiana, they have galleries. Uh, but this is where community gets performed out, outside a lot. And most of these stories take place outside. A lot of the action takes place outside. Uh, in Southern uh, writing, when you go inside, you know that's a different, that's a confined environment where people tend to go to uh, um, introspect, to reflect. If you know Gaines's uh, "In My Father's House," that is a, a fabulous example of that. Because you know, one thing, you know, Louisiana is this, is this really unique environment in some ways, in and of itself. It's either dry and hot as hell, or it's raining. Uh, and usually when it's raining, it's also cold because it usually rains in the, in the winter time. And in my father's house, it's raining all the time. You feel sorry for these people. They're always dodging the rain, and they're always confined. Uh, the son that returns uh, to the father uh, who, who's been abandoned as a child uh, rents out a small room in a, in a boarding house. And when you see him, he's in that room, and he's tossing, and he's turning on that bed, and he's reflecting. And the father is constantly in and out of houses because he's trying to, to connect uh, himself to who he thinks he has become as a person now with his past. And so he's, he's in and out of people's houses trying to, to locate his past because it's all there, this kind of agonizing and introspection. It's kind of an interesting uh, approach to uh, that kind of representation.
Yeah, I tried to allude to that without getting into it. She was neglected. That's the way she felt, that she was neglected. She got married when she was 15. She was just a child. And that, that was not unusual in that region. And um, um, because of the way the situation was in the South at the time, um, Bon Bon, her husband, and Pauline, the black woman that he was having an affair with, this was quite open. Everybody knew about it. She knew about it. And uh, she felt very neglected. And the, the way she is described is this woman who sort of sits on the front porch all the time and uh, she tries to lure men in uh, to get back at him. She's looking for her own opportunity to get back at her husband. And uh, she knows that the, the, the worst thing, the, the best way of getting back at him is to become involved with the black man. Uh, in that region at that particular time, you know, that was her ultimate revenge. And she had tried to... Uh, entice other black men um, with her look, and, but they knew better. I mean, because, because the threat in the story is not just from, you know, possibility of Bon Bon finding out, but that it becoming known in the white community. And then the whole black community then is under, under siege, is, essentially. And especially if his brothers found out, that was the real concern, um, because there was no love lost between blacks and Cajuns because they were essentially kind of pitted against each other uh, in the region. But yet Louise, uh, when Marcus uh, finally pays attention to her, she is almost as receptive as he is to the idea of uh, a relationship. The problem for the two characters in the book that I, that I don't really get into is that they actually end up falling in love and they want to run off together. And they're both terrified of the same thing, uh, what is gonna happen if they get caught. Uh, what's going to happen. I mean, there's a whole scene in there where she uh, decides that in all the ways she can run away with Marcus is to turn black. So she puts uh, soot all over her face and get it practicing for uh, the elopement because they're going to run away uh, at, at a particular time. Then she has a little daughter too and she blackens up the little daughter's face and has to explain to her why is she blackening her face. Uh, but, but Louise gets it really into it. Uh, but of course you know, the whole thing was, was doomed from the start um, because there was no consequences, of course, for killing Marcus in a situation like that. And, you know, he just walked up to, to get to her to go away and, you know, he was out of there. Why he, he likes to think of himself as being regional. Hmm. Well, I, I think that Gaines, uh, well, well, some things that Gaines says, he really thinks there's a story to be told that is not being told uh, in the South, about the South, about the black experience in the South about a particular region and the kind of relationships that exist. Because what is interesting about Gaines is, and about Louisiana too is that you have, you, you know, you have whites, you have Cajuns, and you have African Americans. And that kind of plays out in other parts of the South and that you have rich whites and you have poor whites and you have African Americans. Uh, but the way in which the Cajuns were used in Louisiana, uh, I think for Gaines was, was quite unique. He doesn't have a story for the most part in which, uh, some, some of his short stories, but um, the, the Cajuns were there, uh, in which the Cajuns play a very prominent role in terms of being that intermediary class, that class through which African Americans are exploited in a particular uh, kind of way. Um, and I think that that's, what he, he had, that's why he identifies so strongly with that region. Because the interesting thing about Gaines is that he actually left Louisiana as a teenager. He, and he moved to, uh, his family moved to San Francisco, and he spent most of his adult life in 
um, San Francisco. But he would go back, like many African-American kids, to the South for the summer. Um, and he, he, he remained, he, he uh, continued to have that connection with the South. And now he teaches at Southwest Louisiana State. And so he spends a part of the, the year there. But uh, it's, it's, it's a real conscious kind of thing for him to uh, want to highlight that particular region. And I really think it's because he thinks that there is a story there that doesn't get told uh, in other representations of the South. And I mean, I mean, I think one of the things that you think about the South is it, it is, you think about it as a region, but it's very distinctive as a region. You know, the, the, for example, we were talking earlier about the Gullah Coast of South Carolina, which is just as different from, I'm from South Carolina, from my part of South Carolina as Louisiana is. You know, it's just very different. Uh, there are all these sort of regional cultures. Uh, you know, the Delta region is distinct from, uh, you know, the, what we might call the Upper South. But, you know, the, the, there are these different regions of the South that don't get uh, represented. And th they have their own sort of stamp on the nature of the kinds of experiences that people have. And that sometimes that experience gets made generic, uh, especially when it's represented by white writers who don't always see those gradations in the way that, that black writers do sometimes. I think probably the closest thing that I can think of right off the top of my head is uh, Gloria Naylor's Mama Day, um, which uh, describes, uh, which is really about a woman who is from the, the Low Country, uh, really the, one of the islands, uh, Gull Islands, and who has moved to New York and comes back and interacts with people in that culture. Um, because there's, there's a lot of the same kind of feel about it. Because there's a lot in common between the um, um, Louisiana uh, area and uh, the, the low country, the Gullah country uh, in South Carolina. There, there are a lot of, sort of similarities there, besides the fact that we eat rice, uh, lots and lots of rice. You don't have meals without rice. Um, and in Louisiana, it's the same way. I mean, you know, you sort of think about it, sort of, uh, uh, but of course, that was because of what was in the environment and what could be grown. Uh, had a lot to do with, with that kind of, uh, the, and the, 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 the love of okra, gumbo. Um, and, you know, we make good gumbo either way. Um, but there's lots of the South where the gumbo is not something that you make. But there is, a, there is a certainly a, a cultural affinity between those two regions that's uh, very close. I mean, I feel very much at home when I'm in Louisiana, um, coming from South Carolina. Uh, it, it, there's, a, there's a feel about it. And people I've met from Louisiana, I have, you know, this sort of simpatico right away, you know. We, 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 we's home people, yeah. Anything else? Oh, money led me there. Why, why else would I go there? They, they paid, no. Uh, <laughs> um, I actually have my degree from Ohio State, and, uh, and at Ohio State, uh, folklore is a specialty within the Department of English uh, at the PhD level. Um, and so you can study folklore in the English department. 
And in, uh, at Ohio State, I not only teach uh, African-American folklore and literature, but I also teach courses in history and theory of folklore. So um, um, my work fits quite nicely in there. I'm, it's my, sort of, a couple of my courses are required uh, courses for uh, graduate students um, in uh, folklore. And um, because uh, we have a, a huge African American and African studies department, my, many of the courses I teach in African American in particular are, are, are cross-listed with that department. Uh, so it's a good place for me to be, for, for sure, as a scholar. Was there another? Thank you all very much. We, we do have a John Roberts book here, a couple box piece of pop, Social Dancing Africa. Thank you very much.